Rupert of Hensar by Anthony Hope. Adapted for radio by Cynthia Pugh and Kay Patrick. With Julian Glover as Rudolf Rassendil. Hannah Gordon as Queen Flavia. Nigel Stock as Colonel Sapt. Martin Jarvis as Rupert. And David Dimson as Fritz. Rupert of Hensau. My name is Rudolf Rassendil. I am an Englishman by birth, although I have in my veins the royal blood of the kings of Ruritania, this being due to some indiscretion on behalf of a past ancestor of mine. It is now nearly three years since circumstances forced me to impersonate my cousin, the reigning king, whom I closely resemble, in a desperate bid to defeat Black Michael's plan to depose him. Michael was killed in his own castle by his young henchman, Rupert of Hensau, who escaped and now lives in exile, although it is well known that he is eager to return once more to Ruritania. I, too, live in a kind of voluntary exile from that country, because the Princess Flavia, whom I had grown to love, had to marry the king whose life I had saved, and we knew that honour and duty must keep us apart. I do, however, receive news of my darling from my old friend Fritz von Thalenheim. Each year we meet at an appointed spot near Dresden, and he hands to me a casket containing a red rose, the undying symbol of Queen Flavia's love and remembrance. I was eagerly awaiting my third meeting with Fritz, although my anticipation had been a little tempered by a cryptic message from him, asking me to change the rendezvous, and also warning me that Rupert of Hensau and his chief agent, Count Rischenheim, knew of our meeting and would do anything to incriminate the Queen. Fritz was over four hours late. I was desperately anxious when suddenly the door of my room was flung open. <coughs> Fritz, where have you been, man? I... Why... What on earth's happened? I've lost it. Lost it! Calm yourself, Fritz. Here, sit in this armchair. I'll ring for my servant. Lost it. Brandy? Oh, please. Here. You rang, sir? Bring me some water, James, and some towels and bandages. And hurry, this gentleman has hurt his head. Certainly, sir. Now, Fritz, what exactly has happened? Are you fit enough to tell me? I think so. Take your time and start from the beginning. I suppose it begins yesterday. The Queen sent for me. There had been another argument between her and the King. When I entered her room, I could see that she was deeply distressed. Without preface, she broached the subject of my visit to you today. Fritz, I can't bear it. The King has become worse. He is even more jealous and ill-tempered. I have written to Mr. Rassendil. Madam. My dear friend, you will carry my letter safely for me, won't you? I'm so miserable. Your Majesty. And he must write to me. Oh, Fritz, I know I am wrong, but I haven't seen him for so long and I'm starved. After this time, I will not send any more, but I must say goodbye to him. I must have his farewell if I am to go on living. This once, Fritz. Will you do it for me? With God's help, I'll carry it safely and return safely with his reply, my queen. Oh, and tell me if he is well and seems strong, if he, if he looks as though he still loves me. Here is the letter, Fritz. I know I can trust you to guard it. With my life, if need be, Your Majesty. Oh, my good, kind Fritz. And take care of yourself, won't you? For your wife's sake, for, for Helga's sake if not for mine. If I could only comfort her, Fritz. If you only knew how I longed to be with her. Oh, damnation to King Rudolf and any promise I made to stay out of Ruritania. I know how you feel, dear friend. But for three years now, we have hidden from the country the truth about your impersonation of the King. If you returned and were seen. The bandages, sir? Thank you, James. More brandy, Fritz? Please. You can leave us, James. Very well, sir. Well, go on with your story, Fritz, while I bathe the cut on your head. Well, the Queen handed me a letter. <gasps> Be careful, Rassendil, it hurts. Sorry. She gave you a letter? And the sealed casket. And I took my leave. I reached the frontier station late at night. 
And it was there that I had my first suspicions that all was not well. My new servant, Bauer, who was accompanying me, was nowhere to be found. Neither was my luggage. To crown everything, there was not a cab in the place. I called the station master. You! At once, sir. You wanted me, sir? I did. Why don't you have enough cabs? Just before your train came in, a local arrived. As a rule, hardly anybody comes by it, but tonight a number of men, or oh, 20 or 25, I should think, got out. What sort of men were they? Shabby-looking fellows, most of them. I wonder where some of them have got the money for the ride. <sighs> well, there's no help for it. I must walk to the hotel. Which is the quickest way to the Golden Lion? Uh, straight along the road, sir. Uh, first on the right after the houses. You can't miss it. I'm sorry, Fritz. I don't Have quite... patience, my friend. You will. But first, uh, a little more brandy, if I may. Of course. I set off into the darkness, weighed down by a heavy coat and a dispatch case. The shade of the poplar trees intensified the gloom, and I could hardly see my way. As I walked down the deserted road, I began to feel more and more uneasy. A doubt of Bower's fidelity had thrust itself into my mind. I knew he had boarded the train with me. Where was he now? I then remembered how little I knew of the fellow, and how great my charge was. In addition to the casket with the rose, there was the Queen's letter to you. If it should get into the wrong hands, that letter would cause a very serious situation indeed. Occupied as I was with my thoughts, I did not notice the three men who suddenly detached themselves from the shadows at the side of the road, until they were almost upon me. I began to run and then fell headlong over a rope that had been stretched across the path. I was hauled to my feet and pinioned, and then one of my assailants spoke. I recognised the voice. It was Rupert of Hensau. We'll find the casket. It may be in his dispatch case, Rupert. You fool, you'll have it on him. Mm. Hold him fast while I search. Mm. Ah, what's this? A sealed box in his pocket? Now bring a light, one of you. Quick, quick! We've got what we wanted. Somebody may come along at any oh, moment. We may as well overhaul him a bit more. A revolver? Oh, we'll relieve you of that, my friend. <laughs> Note case, receipts, bills, and a letter. Let me go, damn you. <laughs> How very interesting. Quick, Rupert, quick! Let me alone, man. <laughs> I haven't read anything so amusing for a long time. Damn you! So, all is not well with the Royal House of Elfbeck. A love letter from Her Most Gracious Majesty Queen Flavia to Mr. Rudolf Rassendil. <laughs> Most touching. Particularly the fond farewell at the end. Look! Give it to me! <laughs> gently, gently, my dear Count. If you're going to be troublesome, I shall be obliged to put you to sleep. Rupert, you promise not to kill him. There's no need. This cudgel will do the trick. <coughs> He's out right enough. My apologies, my dear Count, for handling you so roughly. But you see, you were carrying something that I very much wanted. And what I want, I get. And that's the whole story, Rassendil. I was waylaid by Rupert of Hentzau and his cousin, Count Rischenheim. They found the casket and the letter. I can see their game. Rupert, or this cousin of his, Rischenheim, do you call him, will try to get to the king with the letter. They mustn't. They won't trust the post. One of them will go himself. The question is, which? <sighs> Rupert is running a risk in being in the country at all. And I doubt if the king could be persuaded to see him. Yeah. On the other hand, nothing is known against Rischenheim. And it would be easy for him to obtain an audience. Mark my words, Rudolph, it'll be Rischenheim who'll take the letter. Or a copy of it. Rupert's too cunning to risk losing the original. Uh, well, first of all, we must inform Sapt. You and he have arranged a cipher, I suppose. Yes. You give me the message and I'll put it into the cipher. Well, this is what I want to say. Uh, document lost. Oh, Let nobody... Oh, um, just a moment. Oh, sorry. Let um, nobody see X3 him uh, if X possible. K. Wire who three, asks. I don't like to make it plainer. Most ciphers can be read, you know. Not ours. Well, will that do? Yes, I think he'll understand it. There, I've put it into cipher. Hmm. James shall take it at once. Now, you'd better get to bed. <laughs> Six o'clock. Well, you'll get a couple of hours sleep at any rate. Uh, come in. 
Fritz, old friend, there's an answer from Sapt. Uh, wh what does he say? Rischenheim asked for an audience before he left Strelsau to waylay you. That was on Monday. Today's Wednesday. The king has granted him an audience for four o'clock on Friday. They were confident enough. And so Rischenheim takes the letter. A copy. Yes, it was a pretty plan. Well, I'm going to wire Sapt to put Rischenheim off for 12 hours if he can, failing that to get the king away from Zender. But Rischenheim will be bound to have his audience sooner or later. Sooner or later. There's the world's difference between them. Tell Sapt to keep you informed of what happens. As soon as you're fit to travel, go to Strelsau and let Sapt know directly you arrive. Right. We shall need your help. And what are you going to do? I'm going to Zender. To Zender? I'm going again to Zender, Fritz, old friend. But what to do? I shall overtake Rischenheim or be hot on his heels. If he gets there first, Sapt will keep him waiting till I come. And if I come, he shall never see the king. You mean... Certainly. Have I lost my likeness? Can't I still play the king? Oh, yes. Rischenheim shall have his audience of the king at Zender. And the king will be very gracious to him. And the king will take his copy of the letter from him. Good God. You see, there are two of them. Rupert and Rischenheim. If Rischenheim fails, Rupert will risk everything and break through to the king's presence, and then the mischief will have been done. Very well, then. Sapt must keep Rupert at bay while I tackle Rischenheim. But if you're found out... Better I than the queen's letter. If that should get to the king, I and only I can do what must be done. Well, don't look so glum, Fritz. Whatever you say, I'm going to Zender. I'll leave James with you. He's entirely reliable, and also he can shoot. Now I must be off. How will you get there? To Zender, do you mean? Through the forest. I shall reach the frontier at nine tomorrow night. And unless Rischenheim has got the audience sooner than was arranged, I shall be in time. That letter shall never reach the king. God bless you, Rudolf. The carriage is at the door, sir. Look after the Count, James. Don't leave him till he sends you away. Very well, sir. Good luck, Rudolf. I shall need it, Fritz. Thus I went a second time to Zender. In the meantime, Sapt had received our coded telegram. It told him very little, but enough to get him to try and postpone Rischenheim's audience with the king. This was not an easy task, for he had no idea as to where Rischenheim was, so he could not prevent his coming. Besides, his majesty had been delighted to hear of the Count's approaching visit, since he desired to talk with him on the subject of a certain breed of dog which the Count bred with great success. His majesty was a sick man and had to be humoured. Sapt decided to tempt him with a counter-attraction. I am told, Your Majesty, that a fine large boar has been seen in the forest. Why not hunt him tomorrow? Your Majesty would be assured of a fine day's sport. I shouldn't be back in time to see Rischenheim. Your Majesty could be back by nightfall. Mm. Or you could sleep at the hunting lodge and ride back to receive the Count next morning. I am anxious to see him as soon as may be. Why shouldn't I see him? It uh, seems a pity to miss the boar, sir. Curse the boar! I want to know how Rischenheim gets the dog's coat to find. But, sir... I want to know... Yes! Your pardon, sir. A telegram for Colonel Sapp. Read it. Later, sir, later. It may be from Rischenheim. Now, be quick, man, be quick. Perhaps he can get here sooner. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, man! Your Majesty guessed wonderfully well. The Count says he can be here at eight tomorrow morning. Capital! He shall breakfast with me at nine, and I'll have a ride after the boar when we've done our business. Now, are you satisfied? Perfectly, sire. Uh, good night, Sapt. Rishnheim must have some trick with those dogs. Ah, huh? oh, damn the dogs! The king would be furious if I killed Rishnheim before he told him about the dogs. Oh, now what can I do? Who the devil's that at the window? Sapt. Who is it? Rudolf Rassendil. Good God. I've just swum the moat. Now quick, come over to the ledge on the other side. I'll swim back and meet you there. Right. Uh, Lieutenant Bernstein. Yes, sir? Anything wrong, sir? Nothing at all, my boy. But stand over there by the door that leads to the royal apartments and let nobody pass, you understand? Yes, sir. And whatever you hear, don't look round. Very well, sir. Rassendil! Here! Ah! In God's name, what brings you here? The Queen's service. When does Rischenheim come? He just sent a telegram. He's arriving at eight tomorrow morning. The deuce earlier than I thought. And the king is determined to see him. It's impossible to move him. Pass him my jacket. I feel deuced wet. Oh, you'll soon get dry. You'll be kept moving. I've lost my hat. It seems to me you've lost your head too. Why is the king so set on seeing him? To find out what gives dogs smooth coats. 
You can't be serious. Absolutely. <laughs> All's well, then. Has he got a beard now? Yes. Confound him. Well, can't you take me anywhere to talk? What the deuce are you here for at all? To meet Rischenheim. To meet... Sapped, he's got a copy of the Queen's letter. What? Yes. You'd better come along into the castle. The King's in bed. You're sure there's nobody about? Uh, only young Bernstein, but he'll keep his back to us. Come along. It's me, Bernstein. Don't turn round. Shh. Quietly along this corridor. Who is that? The devil. She's seen you. R Rudolph. Flavia, my dear. Oh, come in. C come in. We will be one minute, Colonel. Oh, my darling Rudolph. Hmm. Well, it's time. Come here. You must let nobody into this room and don't say a word to anyone. No, sir. I would die for the Queen. Good lad. Now, listen to me. The situation is this. You understand what you have to do? I understand perfectly, sir. At eight o'clock tomorrow morning, I meet Count Rischenheim at the gate and bring him straight up here. The King will be in this room. You know who will be the King? For the time being, it will be Mr. Rassendil. I understand perfectly, Colonel. And when the interview is ended and we go to breakfast? I know who will be king then. And we do the Count no harm unless... Unless it is necessary. Precisely. That is all. Is the Queen coming out, Colonel? In a minute. I would like to kiss her hand. You will, if you think it worth waiting a quarter of an hour. Uh, you said a minute, sir. So did she. Rudolph has told me what has happened. I am yours to the death, madam. I know it, sir. Gentlemen, my dear friends, with you and Fritz rest my life and honour, for I will not live if the letter reaches the king. The king shall not have it, madam. Good night, your majesty. We have business to attend to. the count. <clears throat> my dear Bernstein. You're punctual, my dear Rischenheim. And it's lucky, for the king awaits you most impatiently. I didn't expect to find him up so soon. Oh, he's been up these two hours. Indeed, we've had a devil of a time with him. Oh, really? He woke at six, and when the barber came to trim his beard, there were, imagine it, count, no less than seven grey hairs. The king flew into a passion. I won't have a grey beard, he said. Take it off. So it was taken off. His beard? His beard, my dear Count. <clears throat> but I shall get into trouble if I stop here chattering. He's waiting most eagerly for you. Uh, come along. Breakfast is ordered for nine, but he wants to see you before then. Uh, is the king alone? I don't think you'll find anybody with him. Sire, the Count of Rischenheim has the honour to wait upon your majesty. I'm delighted to see you, my lord. Your majesty is more than gracious. Leave us, Bernstein. Sire. Most delighted, for I am pestered beyond endurance about these dogs. I can't get their coats as I wish. Now, yours are magnificent. Uh, you are very good, sire, but I ventured to ask an audience in order they to... They grow so beautifully. A thousand pardons, sire. Long and silky that I despise. I have a most <laughs> urgent and important matter. <sighs> well, if you must, you must. What is this great affair, Count? Let us have it over, then you can tell me about the dogs. Uh, sire, my cousin, the Count of Hensau, is I can hold me no with... communication directly or indirectly with the Count of Hensau. Uh, pardon me, sire, but a document has come into the Count's hands which is of vital importance to your majesty. There is a conspiracy against your majesty's honour by persons who are very high in your majesty's love. Name them. Sire, I dare not. You would not believe me. But your majesty will believe written evidence. Show it to me, and quickly. We may be interrupted. Uh, sire, I have a copy. Oh, a copy, my lord. Uh, my cousin has the original and will forward it at your majesty's command. Uh, a copy of a letter of her majesty's. Of the queen's? Yes, sire. It is addressed to... Uh, to... Well, my lord, to whom? To a Mr. Rudolf Rassendil. To Rassendil? Give it to me. Here it is, sire. Give it to me! My God, you are not the king, you... You'd best accept the situation quietly, my dear Count. Sapped! You are behind the curtains, what the Take devil... the paper, Rassendil. I've got him covered. Look if it's the right one. Mm. It is. Good. Now, put your revolver to his head. 
I'm going to search him. Stand up, sir. Uh, then you're Rudolf Rassendil? I congratulate you, Count Rischenheim. Now tell us, sir, where did you leave this cousin of yours? What is it, Bernstein? The king's servant has just gone by. He says the king may come himself at any moment. We must talk again later, Rischenheim. Now, you're going to breakfast with the king. What? I shall be there, and Bernstein. Remember, not a word of your errand or of Mr. Rassendil. At the smallest sign or hint from you, I'll put a bullet through your head, and a thousand kings shan't stop me. Uh, quick, quick, the king is just coming. Bernstein, you know your part. Now, gentlemen, for the king. Quick, Rassendil, get behind the curtain. In here, is he? I wondered how long I was to be kept waiting. Your Majesty's servant is only this moment gone. We were on oh, the point of waiting. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> if they told me you were here, you shouldn't have waited a moment. It's devilish warm in here, Sapt. Why don't you draw back the curtain? In truth, sire, we were so interested in what the Count was saying about his dogs. Oh, yes, and I forgot. Yes, yes, the dogs. Now, tell me, Count. Your I pardon, the... sire, but breakfast waits. Well, then, we'll have them together. Breakfast and dogs. <laughs> come along, Count. Lead the way, Lieutenant. And you, Colonel, come with us. My dear Count, you're eating nothing. I hope you're not indisposed. I, I am a little upset, sir. Mm. At having to reveal the secrets of your kennels, I suppose. <laughs> I must say, your explanation hasn't been too clear, eh, Sam? It was perfectly clear to me, sir. Ah, good. Uh, you and I can talk about it later. Wasn't there something else you wish to discuss with me, Count? A matter of business, I believe you said? Uh, I beg your pardon, sir, but we are not alone. Is it so private? Messages from Rupert of Hensau are too exalted for my poor ears, it seems. Uh, he wants to come back. Is that your business, my lord? Your Majesty does not know what my cousin... <coughs> <coughs> well, what is it? The old story or something new? Well, are you dumb, my lord? It is only what you call the old story, sir. Then let me say that you have treated me very badly in obtaining an audience for any such purpose. You knew my decision, and your cousin knows it. Do me the favour not to open this subject again to me! As your majesty wishes. Colonel Sapt, see that the Count is well entertained. Sir. My horse should be at the door by now. Farewell, Count. Bernstein, give me your arm. Your Majesty! Quiet, Rischenheim. You'll hold your tongue unless you want a bullet through your head. Curse you, Sapt. Open it, Rischenheim. Your pardon, my lord, but this telegram has arrived for you, Count Rischenheim. Take it. Give it me. Thanks. Open it quickly. And if you tear or crumble it, I'll shoot you. Read, my lord, read. It's just an address. Half 19 Konigstrasse. And the place it's dispatched from? Strelsau. Just turn it so that I can see. Ah. I don't know at all what it means. How strange it seems to me, simple enough. And pray, what does your wisdom tell you that the message means? I think it is the present address of Count Rupert of Hensar. Well. <laughs> In truth, you are very convenient, my dear Rischenheim. Who is it? Bernstein. His Majesty has gone. Mr. Rassendil is with me. Good. Then bring Mr. Rassendil in. We must discuss what's to be done now. Look at this, Rassendil. What is it? Rupert's address in Strelsau. Capital! Now, first we must get a message to Fritz. Bernstein tells me that he's just arrived at Tarlenheim. We want him here at Zender this afternoon. I'll send him a telegram immediately. Rupert is our main problem. I have it. He must be sent a letter, apparently, from Rischenheim. That address was a stroke of luck. Now, how will this do? Uh, all well. He has what I had, but wishes to see what you have. He and I will be at the hunting lodge at ten this evening. Bring it and meet us. The business is unsuspected. Ah. I doubt if it'll bring me. <laughs> it'll bring Rupert of Hensau. Mm. And when he comes? He finds such a king as Rischenheim found, and sapped at his elbow. But he'll know you. I've no doubt he will. 
In the meantime, Fritz will be here to look after the king. And Rissenheim? Well, That's I... your share of the business, Lieutenant. You and he will ride over to Tarlenheim today. You will not lose sight of one another for an instant. Very good, sir. If he tries to escape or give any alarm, shoot him through the head. Ride to the frontier, get to safe hiding, and if you can, let us know. I understand. Get along, then. Keep him covered, Bernstein. Very good, sir. Now we'd better arrange how you're going to get rid of me, Sapt. It'll never do for the king to be seen wandering about the castle without his beard. The cuirassiers are parading at 10.30. I'll arrange that the servants shall be granted permission to watch the manoeuvres, and while the coast is clear, you can slip into the forest. Until then, we must trust to fortune that you won't meet anyone. But I must see the queen again. Oh, now, Rassendil, Rassendil. Still trying to combine business and pleasure. I promise to tell her the result of this Rischenheim business. She'll be here in a moment. Her Majesty comes to see me every morning at ten. And it's ten now. Ah, Your Majesty. What has happened? I, I saw them riding away. I was watching from my window. Bernenstein is taking Rischenheim to Tarnenheim. He has orders to shoot if his prisoner becomes at all difficult. Oh, Bernenstein was riding a pace behind him. They seemed to be talking quite amicably. But I noticed the lieutenant had his free hand on his revolver. Oh, he's a good lad. Sapt has trained him well. I'll leave you now. I've got to send that wire to Rupert and arrange about the manoeuvres. If your majesty will excuse me, I'll be back as soon as I can. By all means, Colonel. Rudolph. What are you going to do? The wire that Sapt is sending to Rupert asks him to meet the king at the hunting lodge, and it's apparently signed by Rischenheim. I propose to meet him there and to get the letter from him. Oh, but it's dangerous. Oh, Rudolph, my beloved, I have no doubt of your success, but I shall never cease to reproach myself for bringing you into this peril through writing that foolish letter. I have the copy of it here. Had I as many lives as there are words, my queen... For each word, I would gladly give a life. But, Rudolph, you have only one life, and that more mine than yours. Did you think we should ever meet again? I didn't know. I knew always that we should meet once more. Not how nor where, but just that we should. So I lived, Rudolph. God bless you. Yes, I lived through it all. You wear my ring always? Why, yes. And... There is no one else. Flavia, my dear. Oh, no, no, I knew, really, Rudolph. You, you must forgive me. I, I knew. Last night I had the strangest dream about you. I seemed to be in Strelsau, and all the people were talking about the king. It was you they meant. At last you were the king, and I was your queen. But I could see you only very dimly, just sometimes your face was clear. I tried to tell you that you were king, yes, and, and Colonel Sapt and Fritz tried to tell you. The people, too, called out that you were king. But your face was unmoved and very pale, and you seemed not to hear what we said. It almost seemed as if... as if you were dead, and yet king. What could it mean, Rudolf? Oh. What does it mean when I dream always of you, my darling, except that I always love you? Was it only that? Oh, this will be sap. Come in. Pardon me, Your Majesty. Rassendil, the guards are in line and all the servants are watching the parade. There's no time to be lost. Slip down to the stables. Your horse is saddled and waiting. One moment, Sapt. Flavia, my dear. God, go with you, Rudolph, my knight. Yes, but my darling... Just a minute. Someone's coming down the passage. Is it the king? We must open the door. Behind the curtain with you, Rassendil. If your majesty will pretend to be going through these papers... Yes. Speak in God's name! Bernstein! What's happened? Your majesty... He's got away. Yes. Oh, what? No. Just as we reached the open road, he said, Are we going to walk all the way? We broke into a trot. Fool that I am, I was thinking of my task and having a bullet ready for and him. And of everything except your horse. Yes. And the horse stumbled and I dropped my revolver. And he saw. He saw. Curse him. For a second he waited. And he smiled and turned and galloped off towards Strelsa. Never employ me, Colonel, as long as you live. It was an accident. No blame on you. It is not success but effort that should gain thanks. 
Mr. Rassendil, you'll do my pleasure by employing this gentleman in my further service. I am already deep in his debt and would be deeper. Well, but what's to be done? He's gone to Strelsau. He'll stop Rupert. Well, I'll go to Strelsau, and I'll find Rupert and Rischenheim as well, if they're in the city at all. Take me with you. I'm afraid that's impossible, Lieutenant. We shall want you here, in case Rupert should come to the hunting lodge. When I fight that gentleman... I'd like to have a man to spare. Are you sending Rudolph alone, then? Alone against two? Yes, madam, if I may command the campaign. I take it he should be equal to that task. Rudolph. I must go. We can't spare Bernenstein, and I mustn't stay here. I must ride to Strelsau, Sapt. I don't take the train. The horse in the stables will get you there by nightfall. Good. Ride round by the moat to the road at the back, then through the forest to Hofbau. You mustn't reach Strelsau till it's dark. Then, if you want shelter... To Fritz von Tarnenheim's, yes. From there I shall go straight to the address. Aye, and Russendell. Yes? Make an end of him this time. Please, God. But if he goes to the lodge... I'll be there, in case. But I think Rischenheim will stop him. You better start, Russendell. I'll come with you to the stables. Come, Bernstein. Flavia, my dear, goodbye. God keep you, Rudolph. I learned later that Fritz received the telegram from Sapt and set off at once for Zender, taking James with him. Arriving at Zender, he went straight to Sapt, who was telling him all that had passed when they were interrupted by a message from Flavia saying she wanted to see them. Count Tarlenheim, I'm so happy to see you. Your Majesty. Sapt, where can the King be? He'll be back soon, madam. That boar of mine must have given him a good run. It's eight o'clock and growing dark. He's never been as late as this. Uh, it's cold out here on the terrace, if Your Majesty will come inside. Shh. Isn't that someone coming? Listen. It's a rider, all right. But I think he's alone. Yes. Yes, there he comes. You see? He's rounding the corner now. It's Simon, the chief huntsman. The others must have gone straight round to the stables, but where is the king? Probably he is tired and is following more slowly, ma'am. We shall soon know. know. Simon! Your Majesty. Simon, where is the king? Uh, the king, madam, has sent a message by me to your Majesty. Oh, pray deliver it to me, Simon. The king has enjoyed fine sport. We started a war at 11. Get on with the message, man, for heaven's sake. As I was saying, madam, the war led us a long way. But at last the hounds pulled him down and His Majesty himself gave the coat of grass. Well, it was very late. It's no earlier his now. His Majesty was very tired, so as we chanced to make the kill near the hunting lodge, he decided to stay the night there with my what? brother what? Herbert in attendance. They will ride back tomorrow. That, madam, is the King's message. Thanks, Simon. We understand. Thank you, Simon. Good night. Good night to Your Majesty. On my life, how things fall out. We say the king will go to the hunting lodge, and he goes. But if Rupert goes, if Rischenheim doesn't stop him... Oh, gentlemen, my letter! There's no time to be lost. Bernstein, you stay here as arranged. Horses for Fritz and myself, at once. Yes, sir. Oh, you'll be in time. Assuredly, madam. But you won't let Rupert reach the king. I know, madam. Oh, from my heart, gentlemen, We I... must be going. Bless your sweet face. We'll do it. Come, Fritz. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Goodbye, and God go with you, gentlemen. Can we be in time, sir? I think not. But by God, we'll try. Who's this? He's riding like the devil. Good heavens, it's James. You know Rudolph's servant. What the devil do you want, James? I came to attend on the Count von Tarlenheim. Sir. I did not give you any orders, James. No, sir. Uh, but Mr. Rassendil told me not to leave you, so I made haste to follow you. You take it? What, what horse is that you've got? The best in the stables, so far as I could see, sir. I was afraid of not overtaking you. <laughs> I'm much obliged for your compliments. The horse is mine. Oh, indeed, sir. Oh, come on. It's a race now between us and Rupert. Forward. For the lodge. Very well, sir. It is dark among these trees. The devil. This cursed hunting lodge takes some finding by night. Ah, there's a light. <laughs> Found it at last. Now, for a pleasant chat with His Majesty. Who is there? Tell the King I am here. He expects me. 
Let me pass, man. But, sir, His Majesty is asleep. He expects me, I say. Go and tell him. If he asks more, say, I have the casket and the letter. Oh, very well, sir. If you will wait here. What is it, Herbert? Don't quiet, Boris. If you please, Your Majesty, the, the gentleman is here. What gentleman? Well, he, he didn't give me his name, sire. He said I was to tell you he had the casket and the letter. Oh, I'm not expecting anyone. Surely Your Majesty has not forgotten me. And so. Surely you expected me, sir? No. How dare you come here? You didn't expect me? Then Rischenheim's note... Keep back! Look at this casket, sire, and we'll talk afterwards. Herbert, take it from him. Your Majesty, I... I... Well, catch it, then, if you're afraid to come for it. Take that, you brute! And that! And that! Bodies! Herbert! My gun! You damn fools! If you must have it, take it! Oh, God, you've killed him! <laughs> there we are. God grant we're in time. Tie the horses, James. Yes, sir. We'll walk the rest of the way. The moon's coming up. What's that? What? It looks like a hoof mark. It is. And here's another. They're leading away from the lodge. Fresh, too. They can't have been made many minutes ago. I don't like the look of it. James, you got a revolver? It's in my hands. Sir. Good. Then we're all armed. Now, to try the door. No answer. It's open. You two, stay here as we arranged. Give me the matches, James. I'll go in. Rich, what is it? I fell. Over what? Come and see. James, stay by the door. Very good. Isn't there a lamp anywhere? It's deuce dark. Oh, we can see enough of the match. Uh, ah, yes. Here's what I fell over. A dead dog. Just a moment. Here's a lamp. Now we can see properly. It's Boris, the boar hound. Shot through the head and shoulder, poor brute. And look, there's a bit of cloth in his mouth. I, I don't like it, Fritz. I don't like it at all. Come on. Let's explore a bit further. <gasps> what the devil's that? <sighs> Good God. Uh, it's Herbert. On the floor. Come on, help me up. What's happened, man? The Count of Hensau, sir. The King. I don't know. There's nothing we can do for him, poor devil. But the King. The King, Fritz! Oh, my God. Try the other room. He may have managed to crawl there. He's dead. See? See the box is still in his hand. Is it open? No, the, the wax is unbroken. And the letter? No sign of that. Thank God! So the secret has outlived him. Oh, we, we can't leave him lying there. Get him onto the bed. James, you take his shoulders. That's right. Cover his face. Come into the other room. We can't talk in here. Oh, Fritz, old friend. This is a ghastly business. We must raise the alarm. If you go to Zender, I'll stop the stir, sir. The alarm? Yes. When the news is known, every man in the kingdom will be on the lookout for Hensau. And he'll be taken for a certainty. Taken, yes. With the Queen's letter on him. <sighs> I'd forgotten that. You see what it means, Fritz? 
If he's taken alive, he will blackmail us with it. Bargain for his wretched life. If it were found on his body, it could not be kept secret. No. No, there's no help for it. We must get him ourselves, and nobody must know. But what are we to do about... about the king? Nothing. Until we have the letter. If we can only catch Rupert in the next day or two, it's not impossible. We must pay for time. Oh, you'll be able to make up some sort of story, sir. Yes, James. Or your master will make one for me. But story or no story, that letter must not be found. But how can we do it? First, the Queen must be told. Let her stay at Zender and give out that the King is at the lodge for a day or two longer. After you've told her, Fritz, you and Bernenstein must get to Strelsau as quick as you can and find Rudolf Rassendil. The three of you ought to be able to track Rupert down and get the letter from him. And you? James and I stay here. Very good, sir. If anyone comes, we'll say the King is ill. But the body! This morning, when you're gone, we shall make a temporary grave. I should say three. For Herbert and our friend Boris must also be out of sight. You'll bury the king? Not so deep but that we can take him out again, poor fellow. Well, Fritch, have you a better plan? No. I don't see what else we can do. It's nearly five. You better be off, Fritz. Now, don't forget. If anyone asks, the king is staying a little longer at the lodge. Yes. Well, goodbye, Sept. Goodbye, old friend. Remember, Fritz, a game is not lost until it is won. Ah, good morning, Herman. Good morning, my lord. Pardon me, but isn't Colonel Sapt with you, sir? Ah, uh, no. He remains at the lodge with the king. I have a message for Her Majesty, Herman. Find out from some of the women when she'll receive me. The Queen has left Zender, sir. What? Indeed, we've had a lively time with it, my lord. At five o'clock, she came out, ready dressed from her room, sent for Lieutenant Bernenstein, and announced that she was going to Strelsau. The train goes at six. The Queen must have just left the station. For Strelsau? She gave no reason? None, my lord. She left me with a letter to the Colonel, which she ordered me to give into his own hands as soon as he arrived here. She said it contained a message of importance which the Colonel must convey to the King, and that it must be entrusted to nobody except Colonel Sapt himself. Give me the letter. I can't give it to you, my Lord. Her Majesty doesn't like being disobeyed. Give me the letter. Ah, in your pocket, is it? My Lord! <laughs> my Lord! <laughs> Got it. Thanks, Herman. It's urgent, you fool. Don't worry, I'll see Colonel Sapt gets it immediately. Here's two crowns to help you to forget. Colonel! Colonel! Uh, uh, the Queen has left Zender! What? She's left this letter for you. Good Lord! She's taken Bernenstein as escort and gone after Rassendil. What? Some dream she's had. She thinks he's in danger. Must see him, she says. She knows he's staying at your house. Well, Fritz, you must go to Strelsau and tell her what has happened and then get after Rupert. A day must decide the whole thing. We can't conceal the King's death any longer. Oh, for God's sake, Fritz, make an end of that young villain and get the letter. And let us pray that Rassendil is not in danger. At the time, I certainly didn't feel any sense of danger. Things had gone as planned for me. Having left Sapt and Fritz heading for the lodge, and ignorant of the events that had taken place there, I arrived at Strelsau full of confidence that if Hensau had not gone to the lodge, I would find him in the city. I made my way to Fritz's house. Come on, come on. Who is there? Is this the house of Count von Thalenheim? Yes, sir. I wish to see the Countess. I have a message for her from the Count. Oh, well, sir, it, it's very late. Could you not come tomorrow morning? Who is it, Louis? A, a gentleman, madame. A gentleman, I'm... Oh, it is you. Pray, come in. Oh, thank you. Louis, take Mr. Ressendel's horse round to the stables. Yes, madame. Come into the study. How are you, Mr. Ressendel? You recognised me, Countess Helga. Indeed, yes. You have not changed so much in three years. <laughs> Do tell me what brings you here. 
And what has happened? Where is Fritz? He told me there was some trouble connected with the Count of Hentzau. Fritz is at the hunting lodge at Zender. We sent Rupert a wire asking him to go there to meet the king, but he may not fall into the trap. I know he has a hiding place here in Strelsau, and this is where you can help me, Countess, if you will. What can I do for you? Well, can I get out of this house and, if need be, back again unnoticed? <sighs> The door is locked at night, and only Fritz and the butler have keys. That window, then, I think I can manage to get through that. I will sit here all night and keep everybody from the room. I may come back pursued if I bungle my work and an alarm is raised. Your work? Yes. What is... Uh, don't ask what it is, Countess. It is in the Queen's service. For the Queen, I will do anything and everything, as Fritz would. What time are you going? At midnight. I will tell Louis you have business with me and that he need not sit up. I shall never be able to thank you sufficiently, my dear Countess. Twelve o'clock. Now I must go. I'll turn the lamp down so that the glow won't be seen from the street. If I come back, I'll knock three times and you'll open for me. For heaven's sake, be careful. I will. I can't hear a sound. Except the rain. So, au revoir, Countess. Au revoir, Mr. Rassendon. It was a filthy night. I must have gone about two miles before I found Königstrasse, number 19. But I was not alone. A man had been following me. I caught a glimpse of him, short, thick-set, red-faced. I learned later that he was, in fact, Bauer, the servant who had deserted Fritz at the railway station and was one of Rupert's creatures. I decided to move into the attack. Good evening, friend. Uh, You're out late for a night like this? You a lad that has no home to go to must needs be out both late and early, sir. I fear you are not telling me the truth. Surely you are looking for number 19. Uh, 19, sir. Aye, number 19, and here we are on the doorstep. This is where you live, if I am not mistaken. Pray ring the bell. Yeah, but I don't It would live... be a pity if this revolver of mine were to go off. Ring the bell. There is no bell. Ah, then you knock. I suppose so. In any particular way? I don't know. Well, just try to remember. I hate waiting, and if that door isn't open within two minutes, I shall blow your brains out. Do you understand? <sighs> Thanks, Master Bar. And now you have served your purpose, you may take that. I hope you will sleep well. The pavement's a hard bed, but I imagine it will serve for the moment. <clears throat> You're late. <gasps> oh, the king. No, but... Is it the beard you miss? Mayn't kings shave when they please, as well as other men? Well, perhaps I wasn't over-anxious to be known at once. Come in, sire. Thank you. I should know your majesty anywhere. Then perhaps you'll help me. With my life? No, no, merely with a little information. You take lodgers, I understand. Now, who's here at the moment? The Count of Rischenheim. He came home with a wounded arm and is lying on his bed, moaning and swearing because it gives him pain. And is nobody else here? No, not now. I was seeking a friend of mine. I want to see him alone. It is not easy for a king to see people alone. You know who I mean? Yes, the Count Hensau. But he's gone to find you. Plague, take it. And how do you know that, my pretty lady? A, a Bauer told me. And who is Bauer? The man who knocked. Why did you shut him out? To be alone with you, to be sure. Oh, I... Now tell me, where has this foolish Count gone to meet me? To the hunting lodge. Ah, but now I recollect the Count of Rischenheim was greatly vexed to find on his return that his cousin was already gone. Oh, now I see. Rischenheim was bringing a message from me to Count Rupert. And they missed each other, Your Majesty. Exactly, my dear young lady, and very vexatious it is. But tell me, when do you expect the Count of Hensau? Early in the morning, Your Majesty, about seven. I see. Well, here are two gold pieces for you, but you'll have to earn them. How, Your Majesty? By being ready to open to me when I come at eleven and knock as Bauer knocked. I would... Die for your majesty. Poor child. Good night. Good night, your majesty. Poor Rosa. I felt sorry that she should love the king so foolishly and so hopelessly. As the door closed behind me, I looked for Bauer, but there was no sign of him. 
A nearby clock struck four, and I suspected that Bauer might return with friends, and decided to hide in a nearby doorway, only just in time. Here's the house. Now, I'll knock, and you stand by to knock him on the head if he runs out. <laughs> now, he's got a gun, so lose no time. <laughs> You'll only fire it in him. But if he's gone, well, then I know where he's gone. You ready? Then I'll knock. No, you don't! Ah! <laughs> Grab him, you fool! Grab him, can't you? Oh! That's winged you, Master Bauer. Either of you gentlemen fancy the same medicine? Hey, look. Look at his face. <laughs> it's a king to help me. A bigger job than you fancied, is it? Oh, Lord. Well, well, it's cheap at ten crowns, and that's a living truth. Well, pick up that fellow, quickly. <clears throat> I suppose you don't want the police to find us here with him, do you? No more do I. Lift him up. Wait here, you men. Right, oh, sir. Police patrol. Hey, I'm all... You, sir. Stop a minute. Oh, damn. You call very peremptorily. Are you addressing me, Sergeant? Hey, what, what do you think you're doing? Running off like that when... Oh, Lord. First you hunt me, then you salute me. On my word, I don't know why you put yourself out for me at all. Well, I... I well, Your Majesty, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't suppose... And why do you call me Your Majesty? It, it isn't Your Majesty. You have made a mistake, my friend. I am not the king. Not the king? By no means. You see... The king is not even in Strelsau. He is at Zender. At Zender, sir? Certainly. It is therefore physically impossible that he should be here. Oh, I understand perfectly, sir. Well, you searched here and found nobody. So, hadn't you better search somewhere else? Without doubt, sir. It was with great relief I watched him gallop away. By now, dawn was breaking and I decided it might be wiser not to give anyone else the chance to mistake me for the king. I made my way back to Fritz's house and tapped on the window as I had arranged with the Countess. As ill luck would have it, however, a carriage drew up at the next-door house. If only I prayed they don't see me. The house belonged to the Chancellor of Ruritania, and it was his wife and daughter who had just got out of the carriage. <laughs> I could always be up at five o'clock. Oh, my dear, you wouldn't like it for long. It's very nice for a change, but... Oh, good gracious me. Look up there, a man. Oh, oh. God, she's seen me. My dear, it's the king. Oh. Your majesty. Your majesty. <laughs> Morning, ladies. All safe, coming. Oh, oh dear, Madam Helsing. Well, the mischief's done now, Countess. I may as well come in. He's climbing through the Countess's window. Well, uh, come indoors, child. Don't stand there staring. She saw you, Madam Helson. And her daughter, to say nothing of her servants. <laughs> I'd give my life to hear the story that the Chancellor will be woken up to hear in a minute or two from now. Oh, what shall we do? You must rouse one of the servants at once. Send him round with a note, telling the Chancellor to come here directly. Say the King has come by appointment to see Fritz on some private business, but that Fritz has not kept the appointment, and that the King must now see the Chancellor at once. But, Don't you see? Go if I can convince Chancellor Helsing that I'm king, I may stop these women's tongues. If nothing's done, how long do you suppose it'll be before all Strelsau knows that Fritz von Tarnenheim's wife let the king in at the window at five o'clock in the morning? I see. Yes, I, I'll write a note at once. Good morning, Helsing. This is uncommonly good of you. I, I am only too happy to be of service to Your Majesty at any time. Uh, any time at all. I knew I could count on you. Unfortunately, Helsing, I cannot take you entirely into my confidence at the moment. There are certain aspects of this uh, business which cannot yet be brought to light. Mm. But by tomorrow, I hope the situation may have clarified sufficiently for me to tell you what has happened. I hope you will trust me until then. Oh, I am absolutely at Your Majesty's disposal. Good. Already I have told my wife and household to say nothing about Your Majesty's uh, uh, visit. I can answer for their discretion as completely as for my own. Then you're a very lucky man, my dear Chancellor. Uh, thank you, Your no, Majesty. No, 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 don't go yet. The ladies won't talk till after breakfast, and that won't be for some time, since they got home only at five o'clock. I began to weave a tale of political intrigue which confused me, let alone the Chancellor. I was just congratulating myself upon having successfully persuaded him that the fate of Ruritania was in his hands when the door was flung open. Now, gentlemen, the situation as I see it at the Majesty moment... Majesty the Queen! Oh, my darling, Rudolph, you're safe, thank God, oh, thank 
God! Oh, it's too late to warn her, Bernstein. What shall we do? The servants and the Chancellor, they think he's the king. Watch, Mr. Rassendil. We'll take our cue from him. All is well, dearest. I... I... feel faint. I... Lean on me, my darling. Come, sit down here. We must play it out. Your Majesty, I am very glad to see you, Lieutenant Bernenstein. Now listen, all of you. It is essential that nobody should know that I am here. You will have realized from Her Majesty's agitation that important business is on foot. That business demands my presence in Strelsau, but that presence must not be revealed. A great deal depends upon your discretion and your loyalty. Can I count upon it? To, to the death of your majesty. majesty. You may leave me now, Chancellor. For the moment, there is nothing more that you can do except keep my secret. I will send for you later in the day. Yes, yes, your majesty. You may rely upon me. <sighs> now, Bernstein, tell me what has happened. My, my foolishness has ruined everything. Now, do not distress yourself, Your Majesty. Mr. Rassendil will think of a way out. No word from Sapt or Fritz. His Majesty went himself to the hunting lodge. What damnable luck. This telegram has just come for you, madame. Oh, thanks, Louis. It's from Fritz. I am coming to Strelsau. The king will not leave the lodge today. The count came but left before we arrived. I do not know whether he has gone to Strelsau. He gave no news to the king. Then they didn't get him. No, but he gave no news to the king, and the king will not leave the lodge today. Thank God, then we have today. If Rupert's in Strelsau, then I shall find him. Rudolph! Courage, my queen. A few hours will see the end to our dangers. And then? Then you'll be safe and at rest, and I shall be proud in the knowledge of having served you. And you? I must go now. Let us leave them. Come with me, Lieutenant. I was grateful to them for their discretion, we both were. For the moment, all thought of Rupert of Hensau fled from my mind. But he had not been inactive. He had returned to number 19 Königstrasse, where he was greeted by his ally and accomplice, Rischenheim. Rupert! What news? You escaped them, then? So it appears, my dear cousin... Though some fool's stupidity nearly made an end of me. They laid a trap and I fell into it. How was I to know that Rudolf Rassendil was masquerading as the king? Rassendil. So he's in this. Then the note which I thought was from you actually came from him. That's it. I escaped and tried to warn you, but I was too late. What happened to you? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, having received your message, which was not your message, I went to the lodge... And found Sapt there. Oh dear, no, Sapt wasn't there. But, but surely they laid a trap for you. It's very possibly, but the jaws didn't bite. But what did you find? I found the king's forester, the king's boar hound. Oh, and I found the king himself, too. The king at the lodge? You weren't so wrong as you thought you were. Well, then you gave him the letter. Yeah, alas, no, my dear cousin. Well, I threw the casket at him, but I don't think he had time to open it. And uh, we uh, didn't get to the stage of the conversation at which I had intended to produce the letter. But why not? Have you noticed that my coat is torn? Yes, I see it is. Well, the boar hound tried to bite me, cousin. And the forester would have stabbed me. And, well, the king wanted to shoot me. For God's sake, what happened? Well, none of them did what they wanted. Heaven help me, you see. And so the dog will bite no more. And the forester will stab no more. Well, surely the country is well rid of them. And the king? And the king will shoot no more. Rupert, you... Oh, my God. The king was a fool. I had no alternative. We must fly. We must leave the country at yeah, once. We'd better go, certainly, but not yet. Let me go, Rupert. Let me go alone. Look, if you want money, here's all I have. Take it and get out of Strelsau. How very odd. Come over here, cousin. Hmm? Look out of the window. I don't see anything. The royal standard is still flying over the palace. Surely that's remarkable. But don't you think that Sapt or some other of Her Majesty's friends must have gone to the lodge last night? They certainly meant to. And they would have found the king. 
Why isn't the flag at half-mast? I don't understand it. Nor do I. I wonder if that old player sapped has got a king up his sleeve again. If that was so... And where the devil's bother? He was my eyes. Here we are, cooped up here, and I don't know what's going on. I wonder what Rassendil is up to. I wish to heaven I was quit of it all. I must know what they are doing. I... You must go and ask an audience of the king. But the king that is... we shall know better, dear cousin, when you've asked for your audience. Listen, if they're not concealing the fact of the king's death, I shall slip across the frontier. From there, I shall bring pressure to bear on the queen by threatening to publish her precious letter unless she accedes to my demands. Blackmail! Oh, call it what you like. On the other hand, if they are concealing the king's death, I know who the king in Strelsau must be, our friend Rudolf Rassendil. I've got him, Rischenheim. I've got him at last. <laughs> Either he gives me back my estates and money, aye, and plenty of it, or I shall go publicly and proclaim the death of the king from the steps of the cathedral. But you can't... After all, who can tell whether Sapt or I came first to the lodge? Who left him dead, Sapt or I? Who had the most interest in killing him? I only sought to make him aware of what touched his honour was sapped who's always been hand in glove with a man who's usurping his name and his throne <laughs> <laughs> they've not done with Rupert of Hensau yet sir. it's a bold plan but upon my word Rupert I believe it may succeed I'll go straight to the palace you'll be here when I come back yes or else I'll leave a message telling you where to find me. If you're not back in a couple of hours, Rischenheim, I shall know that there's a king in Stralsa. We shall have them in a corner, Rupert. Goodbye. You shall see that I've something in me. Hmm. If it please God, dear cousin. Never a cab in this damn town. Cab? Cab? Whoa! Good morning to you, Richenheim. Can I give you a lift anywhere? Thanks very much, Anton. I was going to the palace, if that's not out of your way. I want to see the king, if you'll give me a minute or two. Actually, I'm taking some flowers to my charming cousin, Helga von Tallenheim. If you don't mind coming there first, I'll take you on to the palace afterwards. That'll suit me very well. Right. Jump in. Magnificent pair of horses, these. Aren't they? They have a pretty turn of speed, too. Here's the street. Lord, what a crowd. Outside the Tallenheim's house, too. What's up, I wonder? There's the Chancellor on the steps. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, what's going on here, my dear Chancellor? Isn't that one of the royal carriages? Uh, the Queen's with the Countess Tallenheim. The people are waiting to see her come out. And you've been to visit her? Uh, uh, yes, I, I went to pay my respects, Rischenheim. It was a, a business visit, really. I have business also, very important business. But it's with the King. I won't keep you a moment, Rischenheim. I'm just going into my cousin. With the King? I'm on my way to the palace to find out where he is. Perhaps you can help me. Is he at Zender? Uh, at Zender? Well, no, I don't actually... Um, uh, excuse me, but what is your business? You must forgive me, my dear Chancellor, but it's, uh, well, secret. <laughs> well, I must go to the palace. Or I wonder if Her Majesty would condescend to help me. I think I'll risk a request. Oh, I don't think I should do that. The Queen is um, very much engaged. She won't like to be disturbed. She can but refuse. Oh, the young one's going in. It can't von Rischenheim, isn't it? I wonder how long Her Majesty will be. I wish Queen to see Her long. Majesty. Her the Majesty very open. much There seems to be some sort of an argument going on. She's unable to receive, Your Lordship. Unable to receive uh. me? Oh, hello, Bernstein. Good morning. Did I hear you say you wanted another interview with the King? My dear Rischenheim, I didn't think you found the last one altogether pleasant. There's a strange difficulty in finding our good King. The Chancellor here doesn't know where he is, or at least he won't answer my questions. Possibly the King has his reasons for not wishing to be disturbed. That may well be, Not the Count von Rischenheim. If so, let him enter and then shut the door. That's the King's voice. God, God save, save the, the king. king! Yes, there he is in the doorway. See him? Long live the King! This way, Rischenheim. Since you wish to come in, come in. Oh, but I... 
I don't think I... We mustn't keep His Majesty waiting. The Count von Rischenheim. Shut the door, Bernstein. Well, my lord, I imagine you came to find out something. Do you know it now? I know now that I am dealing with an imposter. Precisely. And imposters cannot afford to be exposed. Now listen carefully. For a few hours today, I am king in Strelsau. In those few hours, I have an account to settle with your cousin. Whether I succeed or fail, by tonight I shall be far from Strelsau, and the king's place will be free for him again. In the meantime, you will be detained here. Disarm him, Bernenstein. Your gun, if you please, my lord. Damn you. Thanks. Mr. Rassendel, the Queen is asking for you. I'm coming. Look after him, Bernenstein. He won't escape a second time, sir. How is she, Helga? Oh, very distressed. She knows that the people saw you just now. It's a tight enough corner, but we'll get out of it somehow. Rudolf, what can we do? All that crowd of people know that the king is here. Soon the whole town will know it. We must send word to Sap to keep it from the king's ears at all costs. I must go and do my work and then disappear. Your work? You mean Rupert? Yes. Don't go, Rudolf. He'll kill you. Never mind the letter. I'd rather a thousand times that the king had it than that you should... Oh, my dear, don't go. I must go, Flavia. Fritz, is all well? Do they take you for the king? Those people outside? Yes. Heavens, man, don't look so white. I can just settle with Rupert and disappear. We must have that letter, or it will get to the king after all. The king... The king will never see the letter. Rupert himself has ensured that. What do you mean? Your Majesty... Rudolph. The king is dead. Oh! What? Dead? Rupert killed him. The boar hound attacked Rupert, then Herbert and the king attacked him, and he killed them all. When? Last night. They... He's at the lodge. Sapt and James are there too. Nobody knows yet. We were afraid you might be taken for him by somebody. Rudolph, what's to be done now? I'm going to kill Rupert of Hensau. Fritz, send word to Sapt that the king is in Strelsau. He'll understand, and that instructions will follow by midday. Rudolph, must you go since the... Since this has happened... Hush, my dearest lady. When I have killed Rupert, I shall visit the lodge on my way to the frontier. You'll come and see me before you go. I ought not to, but I will, my queen, just for once. And now for the Königstrasse and Rupert. But, but what if he kills you? He won't kill me. Oh. Oh. He's gone. Oh, Helga, Helga. Leave her to me, Fritz. We must get her back to the palace as soon as possible. I'll go and get the crowd cleared away and then come back. Do your best for her, Helga, my dear. Oh, your Majesty. What can I say to comfort you? Oh, if only I could be sure that no harm will come to him. Try not to think of such a thing. He is so brave, so clever. Oh, and you, Helga, you are so wise. Yes, you're right. I mustn't even think that. Where is Count von Rischenheim? I should like to see him. I will fetch him, Your Majesty. Oh, Rudolph, my beloved. To think that my folly has brought you to this. Count von Rischenheim, Your Majesty. Sit down, my lord. Your Majesty. I have desired to speak with you because I do not wish a gentleman of your rank to think too much evil of his queen. Because of me, the king lies dead, and a faithful, humble fellow also, caught in the net of my unhappy fortunes, has given his life for me, though he didn't know it. Yet another gallant gentleman carries his life in his hands for me, did you think, my lord, that the sin in my heart had no punishment, that you took it upon yourself to add shame to my suffering? Rupert persuaded me. He said the king would be grateful. I know. But you wouldn't have listened to such persuasions if my fault hadn't blinded your eyes. I thank God that you have come to no greater hurt through what you have done. Your Majesty. I am going to the palace, my lord. Will you come with me? Madam, 
You forgive me, then? Willingly. All I ask of you is your silence. Count von Rischenheim knows things that most people do not know, madam. What security can he offer? My word of honour, your majesty. Talenheim, I swear by heaven that I'll serve her in everything. Come, my lord. We will go to the palace together. Take care of her, Rischenheim, or you will have me to answer to. Will you come with us, Fritz? No, madam. Uh, I will follow Rudolf. But first I must send a message to the lodge. Colonel Sapt must hear news of what has taken place. Ah, excellent vintage. You're very silent, friend James. What are you thinking about? I was thinking, Colonel, that as the King is dead and my master, Mr. Rassendale, is alive... So far as we know. So far as we know, indeed, sir. Yes, well, go on. Yeah, well, I couldn't help thinking what a pity it is that my master can't take his place and uh, be King. Huh. Rassendale makes an excellent King, but it's impossible, James, from every point of view. Not altogether, sir. Oh, come, come. Yeah, excuse me, sir. Uh, suppose we said that the King came to the lodge with you last night and was joined there by his friend, Mr. Rassendale. Huh? Uh, we go on to say that His Majesty went out early this morning on a private business, and that while he was away, the, um, the lodge caught fire. Good Lord. In spite of our efforts to save them, my unhappy master and poor Herbert were consumed to ashes. Quite unrecognisable they would be, sir. You mean there would be an end of Rudolf Rassendil? Sir, I myself would carry the tidings to his family. Whereas the King of Ruritania... would enjoy a long and prosperous reign, God willing, sir. Uh, what of the Queen? Oh, do not misunderstand me, sir. They could be secretly uh, married... Oh, James, <laughs> you are a cool hand. Yes, sir? What a thing. <laughs> it's fate, James, it's fate. Rudolf Rassendil was meant to be king of Ruritania. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have a remarkable imagination, James. Hmm? What would we do then? First, the bodies, sir. They would have to be in the right places. Then uh, oil and wood, there's plenty in the kitchen, and a candle, and the thing would be done. It is a bold plan, sir, a terrible plan, but it is to save the Queen. Your gun, James. See who it is. Yes, sir. I'll keep you covered. Who is it? A message from Strelsau, from Count Tollenheim. Yeah, well. Uh, a message, sir, from Count Tarnheim. Uh, thank you. <laughs> James. James, my friend, you win. You win. Sir? <laughs> Listen. Rassendil, seen by the people and acclaimed as king. Come along, my kingmaker. We've work to do. Yes, sir. Naturally, I was not aware of the momentous decision that Sapt had just taken, for I was fully occupied with my visit to number 19 Königstrasse. Rosa had let me in, and I mounted the narrow wooden staircase and opened the door. Ah, the play actor. The play actor, indeed. But with a shorter part this time. Oh, the old one, surely. The king with a pasteboard crown. Well, I've given the other one a heavenly crown. But perhaps I'd tell you news. No, I know what you've done. My lord, you're alone in this matter now. Rischenheim is a prisoner. Your rogue bar I met last night and broke his head. Ah. Come, sir, your plan has failed. Give up the letter. You'll see me safe off if I give it to you? I'll prevent your death, yes. And I'll see you safe in a fortress where a trustworthy gentleman will guard you for the rest of your life. It's impossible to set you free. That's the offer, then? The extreme limit of indulgence. I'll see you damned first. Come and take your letter, if you can. I should put that gun down, my lord. First, I have you covered. Secondly, the sound of shots will greatly decrease your chances of escape. True. Well, will you fight like a gentleman, Blades? Provided we settle the matter here and now, the manner is the same to me. Put your revolver on the table, then, and I'll lay mine by the side of it. I beg your pardon, but you must lay yours down first. After all, you know that you can trust me. You know that I can't trust you. There you are, then. Curse you. And the letter? 
Thank you. I will put both the guns on the mantelpiece with the Queen's letter between them. <laughs> there. Your sword, Count Rupert. And now, on guard! I knew we should meet again, Rassendil. On guard, indeed. Nearly, nearly, nearly isn't quite. <laughs> I have you now. Say your prayers, King Rudolph. I did not know that Rosa Holf had seen our confrontation through a small hole in the door. Having seen the man she thought to be the king, being steadily driven back against the door, she raised the alarm. Mother, Hensel is killing the king. What can we do? What king? Oh, don't you understand? The king's upstairs. He came to see the count and they're fighting. I must get help. I know he'll be oh, killed. Let them alone, you fool. It's not our business. Oh, let me go, Mother. Rosa! Help the Come king! Back. Oh, Count von Tallenheim, the king! Follow me on time, where is he? Upstairs, upstairs, my lord! Quickly, Bernstein, follow me! We had been fighting for what seemed a lifetime when a sudden noise below made us both turn. In that instant, Hensau slackened his hold on his weapon and I struck it out of his hand. Pick up your sword, Count Rupert. You swear you won't touch me if I do? Oh, you young fool. Do you not know me yet? You have my promise, pick it up. He won't kill an unarmed man. Then please move back. Very well. I should have guessed a trick. Now you have the gun, Hensau. The end, I think, play act for one of us, Hensau. Don't leave Rudolph! Oh, uh, Fritz. The Count and I have a score to settle. One of us will die from a bullet from this gun. And it will be you. Play actor. I think not. The bullet will enter your black heart. Rupert, it is getting nearer. 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 Killed him, Rudolph. Yes. I've killed him. That, gentlemen, is the end of Count Rupert of Hensau. And that is the end of the Queen's ill-fated letter. Let us go to her and tell her it is beyond reach of hurt. Your Majesty, thank God you're safe. Thanks to you, my dear. Thanks to you. Here is my watch. Keep it to remind you of me. I shall never part with it, Your Majesty. Never. We drove through the crowded streets, the people cheering and waving their hats. When we reached the palace, the cheering grew to a deafening roar. On the top step stood Flavia. I fell on one knee and kissed her hand and gave her the reassurance she needed. I told her, all's well, he's dead, and the letter burnt. Later, a council of war was held. I was still determined to leave Strelsau, and we were discussing how we could most expediently reveal the fact of the king's death when Sapt entered the room, followed by James. Sapt informed us in a harsh, matter-of-fact voice that the lodge had been burnt to the ground and that nothing remained but ashes and three charred bodies. Herbert's, the hounds, and... Whose was the other body, Colonel? Uh, Mr. Rassendil, a friend of the King's, who, with his servant James, was awaiting His Majesty's return from Strossau. James here is ready to start for England to tell Mr. Rassendil's relatives the news. That is all a lie, Sapt. 
It is no lie that the lodge is burned, and the bodies in it. That half the peasants know it, and that no man could tell the body for the king. You're all bent on making a rogue of me. Even James is in the plot, for all I know. <clears throat> I suggested it, sir. As I thought, all of you. Well, I won't be forced. I need say nothing of the Queen's letter, but I will tell the people that I, Rudolf Rassendil, played the King only in order to serve the Queen and to punish Rupert of Hensau. And what of the Queen? Haven't I heard how she greeted you before all Strosau as her husband and her love? Will they believe that she didn't know her husband? And we, your friends who stood by you, who will believe that we were loyal to the King and that we weren't implicated in his murder? Ah, oh, Rudolf Rassendil, God preserve me from a conscience that won't let me be true to the woman I love or to the friends who love me. Come now, for the Queen's honour and our love. Yes. Yes, for my sake, Rudolf. Are you two against me, my Queen? Only you can decide, Rudolf. The Countess and I will leave you to make up your mind. I should like to walk up and down outside and think it over. Alone. Yes, do. Take your time, lad. Take your time. I know what's in your mind, sapped old friend. But if I decide to go away, then away I shall go. Whatever time it is. I know you will, confound you. I went into the garden. The cool air might help me to make the most momentous decision of my life. My friends remained in the room where I had left them. Time seemed almost to stand still, waiting to... Oh, the dream. The dream, Fritz. It has come again. My lady. I saw Rudolph as plainly as I see you. They called him king as they did today, but they did not cheer. They just looked at him sadly. He, he was lying quite still. Oh, Fritz, he looked as if he were dead. <gasps> where, where is he? Why aren't you with him indeed, gentlemen? You take your duty lightly. He is out there in the garden, madam. He said he wished to be alone and forbade us to follow him. But well, you should have kept him in sight. We can see him from here, madam. Look, there he is, walking under the trees. Oh, Rudolph. Now he's stopped. He's looking up at the moon. By heaven, I believe he's reached the decision. Let us go to him. What's that? The shadow under the trees. Trick of the moonlight. No, by God, it isn't. It's a man. Look out! No! It's Bauer! After him, Bauer's time! Wait, look, there he goes, through the bushes! Is that... Is that you, Sapped? He... He's got me, old friend. Oh. He shot through the back. Fritz! Fritz, go and get help, sir. Oh, Rudolph. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. I got power. Split his skull for him. It's too late, Bernstein. He's managed to avenge his master, Rupert of Hensar. James, help me. Help me lift him. Gently. Very well, sir. Bernstein, quick. Bring doctors. They might just be able to save him. Sapped and James have carried me into the bedroom. I can see that I have lost much blood and that Bauer has done his work well. The doctor is an honest man and he knows that I only have a few hours to live. That is why I am telling this, my strange and extraordinary story, to James, so that he can write it all down and let you know my family and relatives. How I, Rudolf Rassendil, spent my time on those two visits to Ruritania. Have you got it all down now, James? I have, Mr. Rassendil, but you're not... About another few minutes, my friend. They might be wrong. No. The doctors are being honest. Sapped knows it. Don't you, sir? I've sent for the Queen to him. Is... is she coming? Yes, she's coming. Sire? Sire? <laughs> well, for an hour, then. <laughs> Rudolph. 
Oh, Rudolph, my beloved. Flavia, my dearest queen. God has decided. I've... I've tried to do the right thing through it all. Sapped and Bernenstein and you, Fritz. Shake my hand. No, don't kiss it. We've done with pretense now. Now, Flavia, your hand. In life and in death, my sweet queen. Oh, is, is he? He has fallen asleep. God rest his soul. He looks so peaceful. He does look peaceful, Your Majesty. Yes, Fritz. And it was right that as the king he died, and as the king he should lie in state. Is that a rose, Mama? Why does the king have a red rose in his hand? Who put it there? Shh, Marie. Pay your respect to His Majesty. It is the dream, Fritz. They speak in low voices and with grief, and they call him king. But he cannot hear nor heed, even when I call him my king. What had he decided, madam? Would he have been king? He didn't tell me. He spoke only of his great love for me. And my love brought him to his death. He wouldn't have had it otherwise, Your Majesty. His monument, Fritz, will show the world the love I bear him. You will inscribe these words upon his tombstone. To Rudolph, who reigned lately in this city and reigns forever in her heart. Queen Flavia. In Rupert of Hensile by Anthony Hope, adapted for radio by Cynthia Pugh and Kay Patrick, Rudolf Rassendil and King Rudolf were played by Julian Glover. Queen Flavia, Hannah Gordon, Colonel Sapt, Nigel Stock, Rupert, Martin Jarvis, Fritz, David Timpson, Countess Helga, Hilda Schroeder, Bernenstein, Sean Barrett, Rischenheim, Kerry Francis, James, Timothy Bateson. Rosa, Cherry Gilliam, Frau Holf and Madame Helsing, Diana Bishop, Station Master and Butler, Wilfred Carter, Police Officer and Thug, Vernon Joyner, Farmer and Helsing, Peter Williams, Herbert and Bauer, Nigel Antony, Simon and Thug, Fraser Carr, Herman and Anton, David Sinclair, and Fraulein Helsing, Bonnie Harron. The play was produced by Martin Jenkins. <laughs>